Hello and welcome to The Shaking Up Show. I'm Sani Rudravajla and I'm joined by a very special guest. He is the only man that I've ever told that I loved while sober. And you'll know that if you've heard me talk to him in Out of Our League. Uh, it is Berry AFC's superstar striker, Tom Greaves. Hello, Tom. Hello, how are we doing? Uh, have you had better introductions? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so, no. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, we can do that again if you want. Well, do you know what? Let's let's go right to that, actually. So um, you signed for Berry AFC um, yep. kind of quite at the last minute relative to the first game. And then before you know it, you were scoring uh, the winner in the 93rd minute. Well, I mean, that was what a roller coaster already. Yeah, it was uh, it was a special moment for me that, and I think you actually called it on the uh, on the Thursday night when we had a little chat, didn't you? Um, I think you already <laughs> asked me about that that moment. Um, yeah, it was great. Um, I'd, I'd I'd kept an eye on on Bray FC um, since they formed through pre season and things like that. And to be to be honest, I wasn't looking to leave Osset. I was I was really happy playing football there. It was a little bit more local for me, um, and Bury is probably the only thing that would have would have took me away from from Osset. So. Yeah, um, no looking back. I've absolutely, I've absolutely loved every minute so far. And uh, yeah, that first game was something special, yeah. Yeah, um, and you've scored goals pretty much throughout your career. So um, yeah, I did ask you what would happen if you'd score in the 90, 93rd minute, 90th minute, what would happen? But actually looking at your record, um, it was kind of an open goal really, wasn't it? As far as the question goes, excuse the pun, because uh, it's not the first time you've done that either. No, to be honest, I've made a bit of a habit of scoring late goals um, throughout my career. Actually, I'd, um, when Welsh was the manager at Osset, uh, he kept dragging me off a few times of about 70, 75 minutes. And I had to pull him and say, look, I'd, I get late goals. Like, I need you to leave me on the pitch. And literally the next game, I scored in like the 90th minute. And he said, well, you called it, <laughs> didn't you? So, yeah, it's just, it's just one go. of them things. I just... I, I get frustrated if I don't score. Every game, my job is to score goals. So, if I don't score... Even when we're winning, obviously I love it, I love it that we win. It doesn't really matter who gets the goals, but my job is to score goals, and I get frustrated when I don't score. Um, so yeah, I've I've loved every minute so far, and the goals keep coming. Hopefully they'll uh, will continue if we get to finish the season. Yeah. Now in our pre-match show uh, a couple of weeks back, now I caught up with your brother, and I said that um, you struck me as somebody who maybe even when you were growing up were the ones trying to like bag bag a hat trick or a double hat trick in the garden or anything. Was that was that the case? Yeah, yeah, literally. There's no better feeling than scoring goals when you, whether you're scoring in your back garden, like you say, or you're scoring 91st minute winners. It literally, just scoring goals is is all I've wanted to do, and yeah, it's just something I'll I'll not stop wanting to do. See, so this this is why Pele's record can't get beaten, will it? When he when he ranks every single goal he scored in every competition ever, whether it's like in real life or on Sabutio or something. Um, <laughs> so you, you cut from the same cloth as him by the sounds of things. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, uh, if I've scored one goal, I want to score another one. I can remember I played a Sunday league game when when I was older, um, probably about 21, 22. We we had a bit of a, a really good non league um, non league Sunday league side, like a lot of players that played at a good level. Uh, and then we had typical brute centre halves and things like that that played in uh, for Sunday League, and we'd we'd hammered this team and I'd scored nine in this one game. And the manager brought me off with about ten to go, and I was like, I want to get ten. It's like, <laughs> why are you why are you taking me off? So yeah, it's just that's just always been drilled into me. I've just if I score one, I want two. If I score two, I want three. It's just one of them things. Yeah. Now, if we go back to the start of your career growing up, you actually uh, were into rugby, weren't you, until you were about 13 or something, your brother told me. Yeah, yeah. Um, played for Belden Rugby, um, Belden Rugby Club from under eights, I think it was, right through till, till when I was like 13. It was the lads literally at school trying to get me to play football. Um, ended up joining Eldwick Juniors, had a year for them and then um, moved on to Nabwood Juniors, um, just local teams. And yeah, I, I never looked back then. It was always football that I wanted to do. Yeah, well, what happened with the rugby side? Was it just that your friends convinced you otherwise? Could you could you have been a star rugby player in another world? Do you know, I was actually quite good, to be fair. I was probably a lot quicker than I am now. I, was, I used to play fullback um, quite a lot of the time. They'd, they'd punt the ball forward, I'd catch it, and I'd, I'd just be off. I was quite quick as a kid. Um, but I was also quite small. And when it starts to get to under-13 level, you can, you can imagine the size of the lads. And I, I took a hit once, and it nearly knocked me into next week. And that's when I kind of thought, I think, football might be for me um I played one one game for building third teams just as a bit of a laugh James played as well my brother and, and my dad actually played as well 
um, and ended up getting man of the match, got a couple of tries and a couple of conversions. So there's always <laughs> that part of me that does enjoy rugby, um, but I, I never had the, the physique or the shape to, to go on to be anything more than I was, to be fair. Yeah, you know, you've really you've really damned football for everyone now, saying that you got hit too hard to carry on playing rugby. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, to, honestly, I, I was only little as a kid, and this guy is he's probably bigger than I am now, and he literally ran at me, and I thought, I can't move out of the way, and he just literally steamrolled over the top of me. And that was, at that point, I thought, yeah, maybe I need to move to football. <laughs> yeah, so um, as far as football goes, now, uh, I asked this question of James and I asked it of uh, of Wayne Goodison, the man- co-manager of 1874 uh, Northwich, when we were previewing you. So I can ask you yourself, um, yep. you know, goals are, are, are so hard to come by and, and somebody who's a natural goal, goal scorer like yourself and you played at a very good level. Um, was there ever the opportunity to go any higher than the level that you've played at? Um. I had a trial with Bradford City when I was 17. Um, but the club were in administration at the time, so they would have had to take me on as a second-year pro. Um, and obviously, they, they never did that, so I went to Park Avenue. Um, I knew I, I knew at an early age I wasn't going to make it a top, top level. Um, I was technically not good enough. Uh, like I didn't get in my school team until I was like year six, uh, things like that. So I knew I wasn't going to make it top, top level. Um, and then after the, the kind of trial with, with Bradford City, I just thought... Go play non-league football and, and get what you can out of it and enjoy it as much as you can. And I've had a lot of good moments um, in my career for non-league for non-league clubs, and I don't regret anything. I absolutely, I've absolutely loved my time, and hopefully, I've got a couple more years to come yet. So, what were you doing um, whilst you were playing for Bradford Park Avenue? What were you doing as well, like uh, for work or everything else? Yeah, job wise. Yeah, sorry, I thought yeah. I worked at I worked at Bradford City there, football in the community, um, going around primary schools, delivering PE sessions. Um, and things like that after school clubs so I've always been involved in sports and coaching um, and then me and my brother set up um, our own coaching business called Physical Sports in Bailden um, and we do exactly the same now but we've kind of expanded it a little bit we've got a little five-a-side centre with a soft play unit in it um, we do parties uh, tots things for like toddlers two three four year olds and we've just gone from strength to strength with it really and obviously at the minute just the Covid things are holding us back a little bit. Yeah, no, I saw a video you tweeted uh, the other day and I, you, with the sound you could hear, there were some kids shouting and you'd like just started doing a handstand walking <laughs> along the pitch. Was that was that where you were working at? Is that your Yeah, place? that's it. That's, that, that's our little place. Yeah, that's that's my only party trick as well. My, my hands, my walking on my hands. Um, but yeah, it was um, it, that was my lad and, and James's lad. We just, what better thing for them to be able to have their own football pitch and their own soft play area. So we met the most of it. They're, uh, they're really lucky and they know they're really lucky to have that. Um, but yeah, it's just something we always wanted. Once once we got into the coach, we wanted somewhere where the kids could come to us rather than us going around all the different sports halls. So we worked hard. We worked really hard to get there. And uh, yeah, we finally got our place two or three years ago. Yeah, well, that, that's living the dream, having your own uh, 3G. In, indoor by the looks of it as well. Yeah, your kids are living yeah, the dream yeah. completely. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's <laughs> cold in there. We haven't got the heating system uh, booming yet. But um, yeah, it's, it's great. And the lads are just starting to love to love football at their age now. My lad's uh, five and James's lad's four. So they're at a great age now where they're, where they're really starting to take an interest in it. So yeah, for, for a kid to have their own football pitches, yeah, it's great for them. Now, this is probably the longest that somebody's spoken to you about football, probably without mentioning FC United, right? Um, so we probably should probably talk about that. I don't know what you think. Touch on that um, if you want, yeah. The lads <laughs> give me a bit of stick for never shutting up about FC. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, somebody scored 103 goals uh, for FC United, according to the uh, the top FC United fan website, which is like fcunited.ru or something. Um, I spoke yeah. to uh, Tim at FC and he said... Um, the guy who runs that is based in Ukraine, but uh, he's got all your stats, yeah. <laughs> which is yeah, really yeah, useful. Yeah, it's, it's a good website it. to be fair, isn't it? Yeah, every club should have that, to be honest. It's uh, Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so um, how did the move to FC come about in the first place? Um, I was at Bradford Park Avenue. Um, I actually scored the winner against um, FC in the playoff final, uh, like a late on goal, just a, a typical Tom Greaves scruffy, scruffy tapping at the back post. Um, and I'd also scored a hat-trick against FC a couple of seasons before that as well. So Margie knew who I was, the manager, Carl Margison, at the time. Um, my time at Park Avenue was coming to an end. I'd, I started to kind of fall out of love with football a little bit. I was, found myself on the bench quite a lot. And I'm, I'm not one to shy away from competition, um, but I'm also one to know when my time's up and my time's numbered. So it got to the point where I wasn't enjoying my time 
playing. And if you're not enjoying playing football at non-league level, then it's you need to move on because it's a short career and um, you need to make the most of it. So it was. Um, my brother just said, "Why don't you? Why don't you send?" Why don't you, it was Spider, the keeper. John was not at the time was at FC United. Um, I'd known him from Park Avenue as well. So my brother just said, "Why don't you just send him a message and see what the crack is?" So I messaged him and said, "Look, do you need any players? Do you need a striker?" So he put me in touch with the manager and I went down training, signed, and then yeah, the rest is history. Wow, <laughs> there you go. Um, what was that experience like? I know that we, that's a difficult question to answer because it was so varied and, and you ended up becoming uh, the manager as well. But let's, let's start right at the beginning of that experience. And so you've, you've gone into this side, they're a, they're a fan run side, they're at the protest club. They started at Gig Lane. We, did you join when they were playing at Gig Lane or had they moved to their own yeah, yeah. by them? Yeah, yeah, no, I had a lot of good times at Gig Lane to be fair. Um, so yeah, um, I'd signed, I'd signed early January, I think it was. Um, and for me, like I said before, what. I knew that I was never going to make it at a top, top level. So I, I knew all about FC United. I'd, I'd, I'd played against them a few times. I'd gone to watch them a few times um, when they played like Geisley and Bradford Park Avenue close to me. Um, so I, I wanted to play for them. Um, and the manager, Carl Margeson, said, look, if you've fallen out with football, then this is the place to come to, to find your love for it again. Um, and he was absolutely spot on from, from literally my first game. I played Nantwich away. I was on the bench and I, I didn't get on. Um, Greg actually, Greg got the winner. Um, beat him 1-0 and then I made my debut at Gig Lane um, against Stafford I think it was and we won 3-0 and I scored probably the best goal that I've ever scored literally a volley from the corner of the box just lifted it over the keeper and yeah the noise that the crowd made and just things like that it was just a, it was just a massive buzz and I was addicted to the club and that's why I stayed so long even when I found myself on the bench there was no way that I was leaving I was I was working hard to get my shirt back and and then when I started to get close to the to the goal record, uh, Rory Patterson's goal record at 99, it was like, I can't leave this club until I've done that. So yeah, I was I was kind of addicted to it. Um, but yeah, just just because I knew I wasn't going to make it as a as a pro pro, for me to go there in front of a few thousand fans was was like me being a pro. Yeah, well, um, there have been, <laughs> I hasten to say, many times where. Um... Uh, and I hate to say this, really, that FC United have kind of uh, been a bit noisier than uh, when Barry were playing at Gig Lane. It kind of coincided with some of the worst period of football on the footballing side uh, uh, for Barry, albeit things got really worse uh, as far as uh, Barry were concerned. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I went to a couple of FC United games and it, and it was a pretty, pretty uh, amazing experience. And the, you must have uh, a few followers who still uh, keep in touch from from those days, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just like any any other non-league club. To be fair, you, you get friendly with the with the fans and things like that. And it, it, as cheesy as it sounds, it was just like one big family. Everybody kept in touch with each other. I still keep in touch with all the lads, the players, and the managers, physios, everything. Um, and yeah, obviously with the social media, you can keep in touch with the fans as well. So I'm always getting messages of support and things like that. A lot of them message me when I came when I signed for Buddy, uh, wishing me all the best, obviously, another fan owned club. So, yeah, it's, it was nice. Um, that's not just the FC, though. I, I keep in touch with a lot of the lads from, from other clubs that I've played at as well. So, um, you got the goal record. Um, was that before the opportunity to become the manager came about? Um, it was during, during the time that I was the manager, yeah. So, um, from my understanding was that the manager, Carl Margins, and the one who, who signed you, um, left the club. You came in as caretaker. Uh, yeah. Did so well that the the hired you uh, as the manager outright. So you you were doing the player manager job then at that point. Yeah, um, it was tough. It was really really tough. It it took a lot out of me to be fair. <clears throat> like I said, I was addicted to the club. So when the chance came about, uh, well, when they asked me to to take it temporary, um, I, I thought it's it's a no brainer. Really, I have to do it. Uh, one for a good experience. Two, it keeps me at the club. Um, and three, I wanted to do the best for, for the fans that had, that had welcomed me so much. So, yeah, it was a no-brainer for me to take it. Um, and like you said, we did we did well. We um, we was third or fourth bottom when I took over. Um, and obviously, we ended up staying up. We, we had mad runs. We beat Salford, Harrogate, York, um, Stockport. So, we'd, we'd had a really, really good time. But it was just, it was very, very tough being a player manager when I'd been in the dressing room with them for so long. Um I found myself leaving friends out of the squad, taking the taking them off, not starting them. And when you're friends with them, they're all going to come at you straight away. Why am I not playing? Why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing that? And and that side of it was really really hard. Um, I'm quite loyal to my friends, and 
it, it, yeah, it, it drove me into the ground in the end. It was, it was hard work, and that's that's why I had to step down. Right, yeah, because because this was the this was the conference north as well. This wasn't way back down where where we are. This was a very very high level and a, and a really good standard. So it's not like you could phone it in or anything. It sounds like it really, like you said, took a lot out of you. Um, when you look back at that time now uh, with FC United, um, how how do you feel about that those experiences? And would you ever think about going into management again? Um, I would. I do quite like the idea of having me on Saturdays back again. I've played non-league football for 16, 17 years. Um, my lad's going to start playing. I've obviously had another little girl now as well. Um, we'll just have to see. I'm going to I'm going to stick to my coaching at the minute um, with my business, um, just depending on what my lad wants to do and things like that. If he wants to start playing on a Saturday or whatever, then I'll just I'll just take it as it comes. I would like to, I think I'd miss the game too much not to give it a go, whether it's a manager's role or a coach's role, even a, a role just working with the strikers or something like that. Um, I do think I'd miss the game too much if I completely left the game. Um, but it, it was a tough experience. And it, I'm not saying it's put me off because I, di- I did it again for Osset when they was looking for, for the next manager when, when Welshie stepped down. Um, so it can't put me off too much. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was hard. I, I experienced a lot within the probably eight or nine months that was that was the manager. Because yeah, whenever I've spoken to a non-league manager, it always strikes me that um, as much as it might be a part-time role, um, it, being a manager, it's it's a, it's full time in your mind at least, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. The, the biggest thing for me was my was was my mobile phone. It literally never stopped. Whether it was your own players, whether it were players you were trying to bring in, managers from other teams wanting low down on other clubs. Um, players' agents, uh, players that weren't happy, uh, players that wanted to come in. You just got you got messages on social media. It was it was literally constant. And we trained Tuesday and Thursday like any non-league club would, but we'd stay a lot later to discuss tactics and team selections and things like that. So I weren't going in any more than I was, but I was just staying a lot longer. Um, and then obviously coming from Yorkshire, travelling over to Manchester, I was I was on the M62 more often than not. And like, like I said, the, the whole thing just just wore me down in the end. And it was the hardest decision I've had to make in football because, like I said, again, it, I was addicted to the club. I didn't, I didn't really want to leave. If I could have gone back into the dressing room to play, I would have loved that. But obviously, it, once you're a manager, it's difficult. Um, when another manager comes in, it, it was always going to be too tough. So, yeah, I don't regret anything. I absolutely love my time there. It's not spoiled anything. Um I've got great, great memories of FC United. I always will do. Like I said, the lads will, the lads will tell you that I never shut up about it. And me and Greg have a bit of a laugh when he, he scored the winning goal to, to get us up when we won the league. Um, the lads get bored of hearing about that. But yeah, no regrets. But um, literally, just I'm just enjoying playing football at the minute. And I found a club where I can enjoy it. Um, and we'll see after, I've, after my playing days are finished. As far as um, thinking about who's influenced you, on the playing side of things and the management side of things for that matter. Um, yeah. have, is there anyone who, who kind of sticks out for you? Who's, who's always kind of been there for you? Um, when I was a young kid, when I first, when I first started football, so when I, when I, when I was 13 or whatever it was, um, my uncle used to take me quite a lot. Um, he was on the books at Burnley. Um, he never shuts up about that. He was on the books for under 12s or something like that. <laughs> but you'd, you'd think it with a the world record holder for the goal scorer and everything. He's uh, he never shuts up about it. But yeah, he was he was a big influence when I was a kid. Um, and then since I started playing non-league, um, my dad and, and my brother James have they've, they've travelled literally everywhere. I've played at Bridlington, uh, Garforth. Literally, they've got shirts for every club. They've got hats and scarves for every gloves. They've just supported me literally all the way. Um, and I'll I'll be forever grateful for that. Hang on a minute. Here we are thinking they are the Ber- Berry AFC's biggest fans. <laughs> well, they are now. <laughs> oh, well, well, right. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> They're also um, Garth of Towns, Bradford Back Avenues, <laughs> FC United, <laughs> and the, the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, you, you said about family. And I know when you scored the winning goal uh, against Eaton, you, you went and spoke to your dad um, and, and talks about your gran. That's That's right, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, my dad's my dad's had a, a really tough time um, of late. He's he's lost a couple of friends, um, and then literally during the during the pandemic, um, we lost my gran, my dad's mum, and it's hit him hard. So I just felt it was right to go over and say that 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 goal was for my gran, and he's quite an emotional guy. My dad don't think about it looking at him, but he's uh, yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's a very emotional guy, and um, yeah, it hit him hard a little bit. But I think he was uh, I think he was proud that I did that for him. Oh, that's that's lovely. Um, I know, you know, 
for all of us, we're all in lockdown. You know, I'm recording this in, in my bedroom. You're in um, spare room, by the looks of it, or bedroom. Attic, yeah. Attic. In the attic, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, this is as great as talking to you. We'd, we'd sooner rather be out and about and everything. Um, yeah, as somebody who, you know, identifies themselves as a as, as somebody who lives and breathes football, you know, every Saturday you're out there playing, you know, you've, you've got a, a, a newborn daughter that you can see a lot more uh, and a son. Yeah. But um, what has what's the impact been for you as far as, you know, missing out on this and 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 also other players in the squad? You know, do you get that sense that? Uh, well, I know this is really tough for everyone, but as somebody who's out there playing every week, to lose that, how how are you feeling about it all? Yeah, it's 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 been very frustrating, and uh, I mean, I've never I've never suffered suffered with uh, mental health myself or anything like that, but I can see people struggling with it because of this. Um, you're just so restricted in what you can do, and on the football side of it, this is why I play football, and I'm I'm pretty petrified of retiring to be fair, because I know that I like the buzz of the dressing room so much. Um, and I know that I will miss it and that probably will affect my my mental health when I do do that. Um, so, yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough, especially with the new club and we're doing well. Um, so people who are sat bottom of the league might not say the same thing. They might want the season null and void. But for us, as a group of players that we've come together at such short notice and and kicked on so well, it's it's really, really frustrating. Um, I can't understand why they want to null and void it in January. Um, fingers crossed they don't do that and they extend the season. But yeah, it's been it's been tough. Uh, like you say, I'm I'm an active guy. I work a lot. I um I play football. I I get down on the motorway. Like the trips down the motorway, everyone says, "Why do you want to travel down there again? Why do you want to go down the M62?" And to be honest, that's it's a bit of a head clearer sometimes. It's it's nice to jump in the car with the lads and and have a bit of a chat and have a bit of a release. And and that's why we do it. When if you're in non-league football to make millions of pounds, then then you're in the wrong game. To be fair, it's it's just all about enjoying it and being at a right club with the right people and and literally just enjoying your football. Yeah, well, well, very well said. Yeah, um, thinking about that, those trips down the M62. So you said we have you got? Do you give uh, any players a lift them on the way? Yeah, so there's me, uh, Chippy, Hello Keith, uh, Joe Stanley, and and the keeper Ed. Um, so there's five of us that travel down. So yeah, we yeah. have a we have a in good a car with and... enough seats, right? Yeah, well, I've got a seven seat, so mine's all right. But with Chippy drove the other week, and Hello Keith ended up sitting in his baby seat. It was uh, it was hilarious <laughs> to see him sat in that. But yeah, it's. Um, it's good. We have a, we have a good laugh together. I, I knew Ed. In fact, I knew Ed, Al, and Chippy all, all before this um, from different clubs that I've been at. Um, and then obviously Joe's just been introduced to us all. So yeah, we we all knew each other anyway. And it's just yeah, it's a good crack. We have a good laugh with it. Yeah, I suppose you know um, as uh, folk folk of Lancashire, Lancastrians, I think that's the right term. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of Yorkshiremen in this side. We're kind of having to warm sea wall. Is there is there a bit of a Yorkshire clique in the squad? Uh, the other lads might say that, but no, to be fair, we've got a really, really good group of players. Um, I've never not really got on with anybody who I've played with it, um, through my non-league days, but, but this set of lads are, are really, really tight, really close. We speak on the WhatsApp groups a lot of the times. The lads are meeting up and going for walks and things like that when they could. Um, so, it's yeah, it's a good group. There's a lot of good players um, and a lot of nice lads, and, and that's what you want. You don't want any um, any snakes or any bad blood in the dressing room. And I don't think we've got that at all. Um, but yeah, we get a bit of a, a bit of stick for for our Yorkshire accents and for um, for probably gravitating to each other more than the other lads. Uh, some might say, but no, as a whole, it's quite a tight knit group. Um, and the manager Andy Welsh, you you know him pretty well. Um, has he ever come to you, or, or has he ever thought about asking you to get involved on the coaching side of things with the experience you've had in the past? Um, he mentioned it to, at Osset, to be fair, uh, to work to work with the strikers, um, but it, it never it, something. It was something that never materialised. At the minute, I just want to concentrate on my football. Um, again, if the opportunity come up in the future, then I'd I'd consider what my my options were and what what my lads doing and things like that. But like I say, if if I can get a role in football that I enjoy and it's not too much stress or pressure, then yeah, great. I'll be a, I'll be up for exploring that. Now. Um... You are the record scorer at FC United. You are the ref- record sto- scorer at uh, Bury AFC, <laughs> as it yep. stands. Um, do you have any targets? I know it's a question you probably get asked a lot when, you, when you're when you a striker. Yeah, um, I usually set myself 20 for the season. Um, but I think now, if I got 20, I'd be very disappointed in myself. Uh, <laughs> I've been on what, 14 what's the number already, at the so. moment, Tom? What I'm on now? Yeah. 14. 
So yeah, I didn't answer without hesitation. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I know, I know the goals I've scored for every club. Like I'm a bit of a stat freak like that. Um, I, I think aim for thirty this season, um, and then target fifty, and then and we'll see see if my legs have fallen off yet, and see if I can do another season. But yeah, I think fifty is quite realistic if we get to carry on the season and uh, and have a good go at it. <laughs> Uh, there's a, there's a record here that isn't going to get broken at this rate if you if you carry on uh, the way you're doing. Um, well, that's do you... it. Yeah, I've I've always set myself little goals, um, and obviously that was that was that was my goal at FC United. I wanted to get that that goal record. Um, I'd like to set the bar a little bit higher, but obviously things things didn't work out in the end um, as I wanted them to. But it is what it is. It's football. Um, somebody said to me once, "Don't ever fall in love with a football club because there's no loyalty in football." But Sometimes when you get to a club like that, you you can't help but fall in love with it, and I certainly did. Like I said before, I was I was addicted to it, and I didn't want to leave. Now, um, I described you on the uh, the Berry AFC pre-match show uh, the other week as the non-league Van Nistelrooy, and uh, I noticed, <laughs> seeing as we we are now friends on Facebook, that you posted the other day, uh, all my goals aren't happens, and posted a video of you scoring <laughs> a, a, a decent goal. Um, would, would you say that's a fair description of you, or are you a bit more than a bo- uh, fox in the box? <laughs> nah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a six-yard man. Like uh, quite a lot of the goals for Burry have been so far. Um, do you know what? I've never really taken I mean, penalties. Of them have been I... on the line. <laughs> yeah, literally on the line, yeah. And you know what? They feel as good as the 25 yarders as well. Um, but yeah, I've never been, I've never really been a penalty taker as well. If when I came in, well, she said you're not on penalties. Um, because I scuffed a few in for Osset, but when I was a kid, I was I was never confident enough to take them. I'll be I'll be honest. Um, or there were always a senior a senior player that would take them before me. So I was never gonna budge somebody out of the way with a chance of missing it and then feeling like an absolute idiot. So I've always let other people take them. So I've literally only taken penalties for the last two seasons. Um, and I kind of wish that I'd had a bit more bottle when I was younger to do it because my goals could have been a lot more. Yeah. Um, so you say you know all your stats. Can you can you tell us some of the stats right now? How many goals did you score for each club? Yeah, I can't have actually wrote them down here just so I didn't forget. But without trying without <laughs> looking, uh, FC United, 103. Uh, Bradford Park Avenue, 63. Osset United, 42. Osset Town 14, um, Bridlington Town 15, Garforth Town 33, then I got four for Yorkshire, 14 for Bury, and I think that's it. 297, I think. <laughs> wow, well, you can. Uh, so, uh, well, if I mean, you can do any Hyde, homeschooling. Hyde, oh. five for Hyde on my little, uh, my little visit there for a few months. <laughs> so, I suppose if you're doing any homeschooling, maths might be one that you could do pretty well. Oh, to be fair, I try to show Louis my goals on YouTube and he's just not interested at the minute. He's, he's more bothered about Ryan's world and all that sort of stuff. So I'll get him there, though. Cool. Right. Well, um, it's been great having our, our chat here, but uh, it's probably time for a bit of a quiz. How are you feeling about it? Nervous. <laughs> right. Well... I'm not the quiz master. I'm not going on eggheads anytime soon or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a very special quiz. Right. So have you got a pen and paper? Yes, I have. Right, so uh, viewers at home, uh, I'll give you a, a moment just to grab yourself a pen and a bit of paper uh, because we'll, we'll go through these and um, then you can try and see how you do at home. So it's only 10 questions, right? And um, we're going to play a game. It's real or not real, right? So you've, you've played across non-league, right? You've, you know your non-league stuff um, and you, you seem like you know your stats very well. Um, but do you remember clubs that you played against or clubs around you? So I've got a quiz here and it's 10 teams. All you've got to write down is, is it a real club or a made up club? Okay. <laughs> Have I made it up? Right. Yep. All right. Question number one, Rushall Olympic. So you write down, is it real or not real? Rushall Olympic. You'll need to write down real or not real. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I'm trying, I think I know Rush All have got a team, but I don't know if Olympics is the, the, uh, the second name. Right, go on, we'll go for that. All right, question two. Uh, Belper Town. So Belper Town. Ready for number three? Yep. Um, Harchester United. So Harchester United. You can tell this is the school teacher in me that I can't, I can't help. This is, what this is the school teacher in me. I was a, I was a science teacher for, ten, for nine years. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> All right. Question number four uh, Weatherfield County. 
So are they a team you've, you've either played against or are in a league around where you've been playing? Weatherfield County. Right, ready for number five? Yep. Cleetermore Celtic. So Cleetermore Celtic. Is that a real I'm team? I'm, I'm going to feel bad if I'm put not real and these are real teams. <laughs> uh, number six, Walford Town. Oh, wowzers. Walford Town. Ready for number seven? Yep. Uh, Avro. So number seven is Avro. Ready for number eight? Yep. Camel Laird, 1907. <laughs> <laughs> I'll repeat that one. Camel Laird, 1907. Is that a real team that you've either played against or is in the leagues around you, or is it a fake team? Ready for nine? Uh, yeah. Middlebury FC. So Middlebury FC. Is that a real team or a fake team? Uh, question 10, and I've got a bonus 11. Just for you. <laughs> uh, question 10. Lower Breck firsts. Like lower lower breakfasts. Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you just added that on, haven't you? Uh, and question 11. Uh, Barnwell. 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 Oh, no. Barwell. No, uh, yeah. I can't tell us an error. <laughs> it's a W, I think. Barwell, yeah. Barwell. It right. could be Barnell. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's 11 for you. Okay, number one, Rush All Olympic. Did you put real or not real? Real. It is correct. That is real. So that you're on one out of one. Uh, Bell that'll, Patel. Do, that'll do me. That'll do me. I've scored now. I'm done. Job's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these don't count on your goal record, by the way. Uh, number two, Belper Town, real or not real? Real. That is correct. It is real. Uh, number three, Harchester United. Uh, fake. That is fake. It's from. Do you know where it's from? Yeah, um, I do. But I've lost my trail of thought. Yeah, go on, tell me. Dream team. Dream team. Dream, Dream team. Yeah. Sky one. Uh, Weatherfield County, real or not real? I'm going to say not real. Correct. It's the team on Coronation Street. <laughs> yeah. Uh, five, Cleeta Moore Celtic. I'm going to put fake. <laughs> Is that real? It's real. And they're in our league. <laughs> and they're all oh my days. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, sorry. when we when we play Cleetham or Celtic, oh, no. you might come but in for some stickier. If they see this now, <laughs> they're going to target me, aren't they? Oh, that's poor. Oh, no. <laughs> I must have just misheard what you said. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's four out of five. Uh, number six, Walford Town. Real. <sighs> Tom. That's the side from EastEnders. Well, do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Is it? I'd put, I'd put not real for three in a row, so I thought laws of averages need a, need a real one. Right, so you, you're still on four. Uh, question seven, Avro. Real. That is real. They're currently top of the Northwest Counties Football League Premier Division. So yeah. that puts you on five. Uh, number eight, Camel Laird, 1907. Real. It is. They are in the Northwest Counties Football League Division 1 South. Yeah. Um, question nine, Middlebury FC. Put fake. Well, okay. Yes, it is fake. Um, it's my six aside team. <laughs> <laughs> which, Brilliant. <laughs> which, which is not in, not in the non-league pyramid, unfortunately. Probably fortunately for everyone's benefit. Uh, <laughs> right, so that puts you on... I've got you on uh, what we got here. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven, yeah. Uh, lower Breck firsts. Obviously, no lower, lower Breck, Breck firsts. But obviously, without firsts on the end, yeah, so fake. All right, well, I'll, I'll give you that one because you, you spotted the, uh, the the trick question. Yeah, yes, Lower <laughs> Breck are in our league. 
And technically, the lower breakfast team are in our league. But yeah, lower breakfast. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, and the like final it. one, Bar is it? Was it Barwell or Barnell? Barwell's, yeah, Barwell's a team, yeah. But and uh, according to, um, well, according to the Ukrainian FC United website, um, do you know how many goals you scored against them in a tie in twenty fifteen? Um, two, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was two. Was it? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well you memorise your stats, but yeah, it was two. <laughs> Love it. Right. So uh, the scores and the doors out of 11. Let's double check here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number nine. nine. Yeah. Nine out of 11. Not bad at all. Just a shame uh, that you're going to come in for some tough tackles like your rugby days yeah. when we play Cleeton more Celtic. They're going to be uh, sharpening their elbows then, boys, aren't they? For that game. <laughs> I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, Tom Greaves, it's been great having a chat with you and uh, best of luck with the rest of the season. We're all hoping to see you playing again. Um, and yeah, I, I stand by my words on the podcast. I do love you. Yeah. yeah you know what? You, br you brought um, a, a moment of pure, unadulterate, unadulterated joy to uh, every Berry fan. Uh, who was there and was watching online after everything we'd been through as a club. Uh, yeah. It really was just a fairy tale. And you've uh, written yourself into Berry AFC's history forever. And uh, you've also written yourself into Cleeton Moore Celtics history. You know, one way <laughs> yeah, or another. forever, yeah. <laughs> no, that was, um, it was a special moment that I knew what it meant to, to everybody at Bury. So um, I've had some nice moments in football, but that was that was right up there with the best for me. It was, um, it was a good feeling. So yeah, I enjoyed that. Brilliant. Well, take care. And uh, we'll thank hopefully you very see much. you soon. Top Top man. Man. Cheers for having us. See you, bye.